at a time of war in the heart of Nebraska. Soldiers and citizens came together at the Kearney Army Airfield. The whole area here was mobilized to support the base. Kearney goes to war. Kearney was a, a processing base. What processing amounted to, it processed both airplanes and the men. The airplanes came here straight from the factory. Some of them needed modifications before they went overseas. You had several different uh, variants of each airplane over time, and there, so there were a lot of, of maintenance issues that had to be done. Lower octane fuel had been drained out of the airplanes. They had 100 octane in when they left. Uh, the guns were loaded and mounted, and the whole airplane got a real thorough check before they set it off, because once they left here, they were going straight in combat. They'd make these 20-year-old guys sign for uh, the airplane, like they were going to be charged for it at the <laughs> if they didn't bring it back or if they got it scratched. And uh, I've had a local farmer uh, tell me about it. Just scared him to death to have to sign, personally sign for that aircraft. They were all fresh out of training. Next step is combat. So they had a number of things they needed to do. Uh, they might write wills. They might buy life insurance. They might uh, get their teeth fixed, get their shots. And another thing that was important that happened during processing was that the people at Carney that were doing the processing would try to weed out the incompetents who had somehow gotten through the training and gotten to that point, at which time they were yanked out of the Air Forces and put into the infantry. It was an important base. Uh, the rest of the, of the air bases in Nebraska were all operated under Kearney as the main base, with the exception of, of the one in, in Omaha. But the other thing that should be remembered is the contribution that the civilians made. The whole area here was mobilized uh, and they came in from quite a ways away to support the base here. Ladies come in from the farm and pack parachutes, for example. There was a, a WAC mechanics group here where they were uh, working on the engines. And just all aspects of the base life, they were civilian and military workers. And this was true all over the country. Everybody wanted to do their bit, and so there was no shortage of people that were trying to help. And had we not had the cooperation of the civilians for that war, uh, would we still have won it? Most likely, but it would have taken a lot longer. And we'd have had to have had a military that was three or four times the size because of all the contributions that the civilians made. So the base at Kearney, in many ways, is a microcosm of what went on across the country as far as people having an opportunity to, to really contribute to the war effort. Shacks that they put up out there for us to live in was about next to nothing. Then they, then they had the guts to feed us with that food out there. Every other spoonful was sand. Thousands of soldiers had left the comforts of home behind, and it was up to the citizens of Kearney to provide them with hospitality. Many of the families kind of uh, adopted these young fellows and invited them into their homes for home-cooked meals and picnics and other things. Among the ways the Kearney soldiers stayed entertained, the most popular were easily the dances. Dances were an almost nightly event with big name acts regularly coming to the base or to clubs in the surrounding area. We had Harry James and we had uh, Tommy Dorsey. And then they had big name bands come in there because they were going across country and they'd make that stop and have a, uh, pick up a few dollars and then keep on going. The biggest problem had to do with turning a couple of thousand testosterone-laden young men loose in the community. And the uh, parents were justifiably worried about what, what could result. They formed what was called the Hostess Club. And to be a member of the Hostess Club, you had to be at least 18 and single and of good moral standing. It was organized along military lines. They had captains and colonels, and, and the captains and the colonels consisted of older women from Kearney who served as chaperones. This pretty much laid everyone's fears. 
and it worked very well throughout the war. It wasn't until the tail end of the war that it kind of fell apart. And that was because there were so many young women that were attending the dances at the air base that the whole chaperone thing just kind of disintegrated. Another result of the boosted population, the presence of black soldiers, meant Kearney had to begin enforcing the racial segregation practices common at the time. This included separate facilities for blacks and whites. The thing you have to remember about it is that a white soldier could go into any tavern in town and buy a beer, but that wasn't possible for the blacks. So they got right to work on building a black servicemen's club. The spot that they chose for it happened to be right across the street from the Methodist Church. And at that time, there was a very active dry movement in Nebraska, and most of the clergy in Kearney objected strongly to the fact that this was gonna be right across the street from the church. But what ultimately happened was that the commanding officer put his foot down and he said, you have to find a place for where these guys can congregate and, and drink beer. And if you don't, then we're gonna restrict everybody to base and not allow any of the troops into town. Well, these guys were real free spenders and certainly the city council didn't want to see them restricted to base. So right away there was another meeting held and they promptly approved the location of, on, on Avenue A. And they announced that the beer would be free until such time as they obtained a liquor license. Especially for the airmen that were passing through. It was the last real impression of America that they got before they left. Because again, when they left here, they went straight overseas. They didn't sit in Maine for two weeks waiting to go. People in the community went out of their way to try to make them feel welcome. 